We have this clip from Benny Johnson. Bombshell, he says. Alex Jones confirms he will sue the FBI and the CIA after a CIA agent admitted agency targeted Jones to destroy his career. Quote, I'm planning on launching a lawsuit against the CIA and FBI. I've retained firms to sue for civil rights violations, government racketeering operation. Let's play the clip. But now that this has come out, this is a FBI agent, a CIA boss. He's a contract manager over large contract operations. That's a boss. Okay, I'm going to pause right there. I think Alex may be misunderstanding. I don't know this guy is actually a boss. I think he was a contracting officer. So that may mean that he's sitting in an office and he handles who who gets contracts. So to be fair, that could be a contracted sort of boss. But, you know, let's see what he says. Uh, that's like a mini section chief saying all of this and and admitting all of this like it's no big deal. He needs to be subpoenaed by Congress. Yes, uh, I am planning uh, to launch a lawsuit uh, against the CIA and the FBI. We have to bring all this out and right as my bankruptcy comes to a close and then right as all this stuff's being finalized, it's really God working here that this came out at this time. You just said you were planning on suing the federal government. What would a Alex Jones versus the U.S. government look like? Well, I'm talking to different law firms right now that specialize in this. In fact, when I get off the feed with you, I'm, I'm going to get back on the phone with the lawyers. It's obviously a civil rights violation. It's a government racketeering operation uh, using cutouts. And look, I mean, they come after my mother, my father, my wife uh, in these mediations. They've said, listen, just come out against the Second Amendment and we'll drop all this. I mean, they've done that repeatedly. Um, and uh, they've even said, listen, we're a mafia and there's nothing you can do to stop us to my face in front of my lawyer, in front of Norm Pass. Uh, and, and so they're very arrogant. I mean, these are the sellouts. These are the traitors. These are the people that really love being under the corrupt FBI's wings, under the CIA's wings. They get a thrill. They get to go out and persecute fellow Americans, lie about them, say all these horrible things, and then say you said it, steal your identity, silence you so they can all pile in on you, make movies about themselves with judges and flashbulbs, and oh, we're so great. We, we went out and got the big Goliath. So in the in the undercover investigation video, the guy says that this was a civil issue. They didn't actually use the weight of government to go after Alex Jones. They simply educated the public on the appropriate means for going after Alex Jones, basically educating them on what to do. Thus, quote, chopping off his legs, taking his money away. When the journalist asks effectively, like paraphrasing, are you satisfied? They're like, yeah, we got what we wanted. We chopped his legs off. We took his money from him. He's bankrupt. That seems to be the goal. Now, why would a guy who worked for the FBI in any capacity claims he's working for the CIA brag about the things they did to go after Alex Jones? Well, this guy clearly doesn't like Donald Trump. Maybe he thinks he's uh, the per You know, the thing about these undercover journalists is they always, when they're in these meetings, act like they're on the side of going after Alex Jones, like they want Alex Jones to be gone after or they hate Donald Trump. Maybe this guy's just saying, oh, yeah, we totally did that. And it's substantially less egregious than he makes it sound because he is blown smoke. He is, you know, talking big smack. I'd say this. You get a former FBI agent and uh, someone who claims to be in the CIA. If it is true that he actually is a CIA contracting officer, sounds like you've got a credible witness statement. And that should be enough for Alex Jones to file a lawsuit and then seek discovery. Yeah, Have a court say like, OK, let's get all your communications and, and get to the bottom of what exactly was going on. I believe a judge should. I don't know that a judge would. What is your thoughts, Doug? I, we, go well, I was just thinking the Cheryl Atkinson case and uh, good luck getting discovery out of the government. I mean, that can take decade. That can take a decade. Her case has been going on for a decade. What's the case? It's uh, they, uh, She's alleging, well, there's a lot of really credible evidence that the government planted some kind of spyware on her computer to spy on her. They didn't like what she was reporting on. And she was mainstream. She was CBS News. And so she's suing the government. Uh, I don't know all the you know the intricacies of this case, but uh, it's really uh, and she's trying to get discovery out of the government, and it's really difficult, extremely difficult. A lot of appeals and a lot of stonewalling. They just kind of want to push it down the road rather than say no, you can't. They'll just say Maybe oh, they you always can't. do this. Trying to get documents from the government, they jam it up, they block you at every turn because they're crooked. They are corrupt. They're evil people. Yeah, like Alex is right. They're a mafia. And dude, they're also disorganized. I was trying to pay 
uh, my a, a $120 piece of over unspent tax from Maryland. And it's like, dude, I can't log into the website. It won't send me my email. So I call the place. They're like, you got to get your email. I'm like, I didn't send it. They're like, well, then we can't help you. I mean, you can't help me. You don't want my money. Can I just pay they you on the phone? They don't want my money. They want no, they to want, go mail some check. No, they I'm want like, you. They want to have li- They want you to have liability. But it's, they they want to be able to go. Uh, you have an unpaid debt. So now we own you. Maybe, maybe to, that's a, some, a tool they can use too. But at, at this level of me with just a hundred bucks, it's like, it's just a disorganized system that doesn't kick back an email when it's supposed to. And that's just like, the state government i can only imagine how how crazy it gets up there with with paper i've heard that it's terribly disorganized at the department of education i've heard that um anecdotal obviously i don't know why i brought up how disorganized it was because they are and i think the strong possibility it's not intentional outright that they want to have a broken system but having a broken system especially on things like taxes means they'll have they'll be able to dangle something over your head well, the, ta- the tax code stuff is like they want to incentivize people. They really want to use the tax code to get people to do things. So they, if they can offer tax deductions, yeah. so that way you'll do something. That's a means that the government has used ever since the income tax became, you know, something that they've been able to manipulate. Um, they do they do it to the federal government does it to states. Like the reason that there's a nationwide uh, age limit of 21 for drinking is because the federal government, the DOT, says we're not going to give you any money for your roads if you don't. And, and they do that kind of stuff all the time. It's, it, is, it is like extortion. The only difference between the federal government and the mob is like the government you elect as opposed to the mob just takes control. But either way, at the end of the day, the boot's the boot, you know? So that's what the, that's what the government is. It is yeah. the reason the government exists is so that way it can force people to do certain things to keep society together. You know, that, that's I, the basic, un, you know, basic. I think you know, bottom we, the barrel. we are getting towards the point where people will no longer recognize the government. Yeah, I was joking about that before the show. I was like, we talked about it yesterday. Like they, they say, like, I, I do not recognize your authority here. And, but I was like, last night we were talking about that. I was like, I literally don't recognize this government. I don't know what's going on. I, I don't know. What's what's the most powerful branch? Isn't the president not supposed to be able to take us to war? That I don't recognize that ability. That doesn't make any sense to it's me. It's not even about recognizing as an acknowledging. It's about recognizing in the literal sense, like when someone walks up to you and says, John, you remember me? And you go, I do not recognize you. Who are you? Yeah, our government is not. The, the president has no authority to declare war. That's that's not our government. Mm-hmm. Right. And here we are. But the War Powers Act says that, you know, he's allowed to for a limited time. As long as Congress doesn't vote against it, instead, it's literally like Congress voted to give the power to George Bush to carry out war. Congress doesn't have the authority to do that. Like they don't. There's no. There's nothing in the Constitution that says Congress you can abdicate your responsibility for declaring war by voting to give the president the power. Like that is literally passing the buck to the executive because. Congress doesn't want to face their own voters. That's exactly what they did. And it, there's no there's no reason for that to not be just totally thrown out as as completely and totally illegitimate. But they just said, well, we're going to do this. And, and what are you going to do? Uh, that Civil War movie is coming out on uh, Thursday. I guess they say it's coming out on Friday, but the first screenings are on Thursday. And apparently Taylor Hansen and uh, Andy No have footage in the film. Oh, really? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Someone posted a screenshot of the credits and it's like, archival footage from and includes a list oh wow and then all these leftists are super angry that that footage was included and i'm like well you know they were the one filming it but uh man it's it's on the mind right now and the reason i bring that up we had these street takeovers this one that went particularly viral where a guy's car got taken we talked about this the other day but you know in in terms of not recognizing the government there's two two forms of it one alex jones being like the fbi and the cia went after him according to this guy that's 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 a political witch hunt. That's politically targeting a, 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 a media personality. The guy even says in the video, well, he didn't do anything that would send him to prison. The guy, uh, the journalist is like, why not, you know, put him in jail? He's like, well, he didn't do anything to go to jail. <laughs> a billion dollars. They, they wanted they him. wanted more than they wanted the GDP of France. Is this all for the Sandy Hook thing? Yeah. yeah. It's all for that. Yeah. I mean, all for that. And so it, it's, it's a wild case for sure. Yeah, it is. The judge, uh, it was a summary judgment, just like Trump. Mm-hmm. The judge said uh, he's in default because he wouldn't hand over certain documents. Alex claims he gave everything he had. And no matter what he did, they kept saying, nope. And so a judge could just do that. This is, this, this, this is what I get worried about. The only group of people right now in this country that are keeping this country together are conservatives. That's it. 
Liberals do not recognize the authority of police. They want to abolish and defund them. They throw bricks at them. They do not recognize the authority, nor do they like anything about the U.S. government. They firebombed a federal building in Seattle for three months. But I will say not not just liberals, because I, I have a lot of people that consider not just themselves liberals. What do you yeah, mean? Well, people that I like, mentioned liberals. It's like, you said liberals just then. I? It's the yeah. You mean like the leftist kind of this mob movement? That's right, been, right, this, right. This communist attempt. Yeah, because there's a lot of then liberal I, people. Then I stand corrected and I meant the leftists. The liberals. There are a lot of people that are just find themselves liberal and like kind of want to keep it together, too. Maybe they don't know how. Maybe they're being led by the media and uh, mass media, unfortunately, this this archaic you know, but but I, I, I stand by what I said. It's only conservatives that are keeping this country together, because if the left took over, liberals would just march in lockstep. It is, so if conservatives at any point simply said we do not recognize both in the literal sense and in the acknowledging sense, this government, there's no government. It's over. The left will immediately be like free for all. They've already been doing it. Roving gangs of unaffiliated political, of just unaffiliated politically, taking over the streets in numerous cities. And that makes sense. That's what they want. They come in with this communist mentality. Uh, they want to infiltrate the United States, disrupt it, and then make people on the other side give up because it's so annoying or they're so frustrated or it's they so- They want to break it apart. Yeah. They From want, the ashes of the old, we shall build a new. They want us to break it apart for them. They want it to, us to do it to ourselves. No, 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 no. I think they, they, the they want to just break. And so conservatives, Trump supporters are desperately trying to make America great again. And so what happens then is you have this corrupt FBI and CIA, hyperpartisan political communist faction, and it is the Trump supporters who recognize them as legitimate. The left doesn't recognize any of the government. They don't they don't care. I mean, they went to Atlanta, broke into police, uh, a police city, like this massive territory, firebombing construction equipment, burning down private homes, flipping over vehicles. They do not recognize the authority of this government. And then you have Trump supporters who the police show up. The journalist will put his hands behind his back, be put in cuffs and shackles, and he will march politely to the court where he'll be he'll be railroaded. So if at any point about, uh, the term anarcho tyranny. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. If at any point in this country, and this is what I fear, conservatives just start saying things like there's no government anymore and they start acting the way the left does, then the United States will cease to exist. There will be a faction of a uh, violent, uh, 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 you call it a mafia, I guess. I would call it the enclave. I think that's the, the best way to describe it. For those that aren't familiar, in the Fallout series, after a nuclear war annihilates everything, remnants of the U.S. government form a group called the Enclave, which is the descendants and technology and weaponry, the continuity of U.S. government. But no one recognizes them other than they are a warring faction. In, in Star Wars, it's called the First Order. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Yep. It's the leftovers from the uh, the Empire. That's yeah. right. If the conservatives simply start saying... You have we uh, I mean, and, and, it, and it is happening to a certain degree. We've seen certain things like the Bundy standoff. Mm -hmm. We've seen things now with Second Amendment sanctuaries. The left starts this thing where they say and it's liberals, too. We're an immigration sanctuary. We're we're not going to comply with federal law. New York, California are sanctuary states. Law enforcement is barred from working with the federal government. This is the makings of dissolution of the federal government. The conservatives, for the most part, just march in lockstep with the federal government and say, well, you know, they're the government, even when they do bad things. But now we're getting two-way sanctuaries. Now we're starting to get Texas defying the federal government. And uh, uh, to an extent, the Supreme Court in certain areas. And now we're getting to that point where conservatives might just start acting the way the left does and saying federal law enforcement has no authority. When that happens, you will have a first order, as Phil calls it from Star Wars. <laughs> Sure, they've got military power. They can, they, they're basically pirates. They're just a large faction of militarized individuals. How they get resources will be interesting. They will seize them by force. It will be an occupying force unrecognized by various groups. And this is how you get the makings of civil war. At least I'd be interested to see what happens in that A24 film on Thursday. We're going to see it because there's five factions according to their map. There's, what is it like the Western uh, forces, the Eastern Alliance or something. There's the Loyalist states, and then there's California and Texas as their own republics. So they're each you, each independent. California's one. California's Texas its own one. republic. Texas is its own republic. Then there's like the Northwest, which is rebel. 
the Southeast rebel, and then a strip through the center of the country, which is a loyalist. I think if people continue to rely on the federal government, but complain about it and, and try not to recognize it while they're still reliant on it, like centralized electric electric grids and power, water, like um, a lot of it is municipal, it's it's localized, but you know the federal government will can cut money off and reroute water sources to states and things like if if we were less reliant on the government then we could create communities and stay peaceful and i don't think it would be as big of a deal i think the federal government might actually kind of lay off but is if we continue to rely on it it's going to keep pushing i think i think the issue is the left cheats uh the democrats cheat and the conservatives just keep playing the game i mean imagine you're playing a game of monopoly and you're watching the other person playing just grab money out of the bank and stick it in their pile. And you go, oh, hey, you can't do that. And they go, yeah, I can. Do you want to keep playing or not? And they go, yeah, I guess. Well, you can't win. And so what I mean by this is when you look at sanctuary states, Democrats inflate their electoral, uh, their uh, their population sizes by bringing in non-citizens and refusing to allow them to be, to be deported. They're doing it in mass right now. And this is going to give them extra congressional seats and extra electoral votes. This is not a legitimate form of governance, but the red states just go, well, shucks, they got 17 more seats than us in Congress somehow yet again. I guess we'll just have to, just have to live the way they tell us we have to Someone live. Someone was saying we brought up those numbers from the uh, Social Security Administration about how many people are reg being registered to vote without IDs and how many are coming back dead. Like a yeah. third of the registrants are coming back in some dead of them. Like in, in Texas last week, it was. I think uh, what we're looking at, like 0.2 percent or yeah, yeah 0.2 percent. There's like an anomaly dead. poke where every once in a while we're like, how, how come a third of the 80,000 people, 25,000 of them it was, were dead? It was, it was one week. It was February 17th in Missouri. One third of voter registrants with no IDs came back as dead. So that's something they said, send it to Laura Trump, because I think is she running the RNC now or is she about to be running the RNC? They're like, get it, to, get it to Laura Trump immediately. This is like big time. Big news for the RNs. They need to know. Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. and become a member over at Timcast.com for uncensored members only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out and we'll see you all next time.